One day, I returned home from office to find my 13-year-old daughter Geeta weeping as she tightly held on to my wife Reena. Geeta's best friend, Lata's mom, had recently died of cervical cancer at only 45 years of age. Now she was worried for her own mother, who was of the same age. Later that night, Reena and I decided to visit the local hospital next day to know more about cervical cancer. Dr. Thyaki told us that cervical cancer is a common form of cancer amongst women. It occurs mostly in women about 35 years of age and due to late detection, the number of deaths are more in middle and lower income countries such as in Southeast Asia. Dr. Thyaki mentioned that cervical cancer is mainly caused by the HPV virus and may not show any symptoms until at an advanced stage. Initial symptoms include irregular vaginal bleeding and offensive vaginal discharge during the normal menstruation period or during or just after intercourse. However, cervical cancer is curable if detected at an early stage and can also be treated after it develops into a cancer with specialized medical interventions. Sadly, however, once it reaches an advanced stage, the disease is no longer curable. Back home, when we were discussing the issue, Geeta said Lata's mother had complained of exactly the same symptoms. She did go to the hospital later, but by then it was too late as the cancer was in an advanced stage. That's when I started to feel really concerned. The next morning, I took Reena to the hospital to get her tested for cervical cancer. The doctor said that it's a good initiative on my part. She added that all women should decide to get themselves tested at least two times at 35 and again at 45 years of age as cervical cancer is curable if detected early even when they do not have symptoms. Thankfully, Rena's test results came out negative. The doctor told us that the vaccine against cervical cancer is now available to prevent the disease. However, these vaccines need to be administered to girls by 15 years of age. When I asked the doctor about my 13-year-old daughter, she said that all girls of her age should get themselves vaccinated at school, health facilities and community sessions. Many countries in the Southeast Asian region have included the vaccine against cervical cancer in their national vaccination program in MOH. 1970 90 by 2030 has been set to eliminate the disease. The next morning, I promptly took Geeta to the hospital where she received the HPV vaccine. Geeta also requested the healthcare workers to visit her school for vaccination. After a few days, the healthcare workers visited the school and discussed with the school principal the threat of cervical cancer and the need for vaccination of all the girls between the ages of 9 and 15. Within a few days of the discussion, the principal and the health worker organized a vaccination camp at the school. Over time, a lot of girls responded to Geeta's initiative and came forward to vaccinate themselves. Many women between 35 and 45 years tested themselves for cervical cancer. As part of the overall cervical cancer prevention program, the health facilities and hospitals now have trained healthcare teams and have also strengthened treatment services. All these activities related to cervical cancer in this district are possible today because of the active support, encouragement and guidance of senior officials and people's representatives. But much more needs to be done. There is growing awareness at every level that more such initiatives need to be taken across the Southeast Asian region. The focus needs to be on making HPV vaccines available to girls, strengthen health system and services for cancer screening, and strengthen services for treatment of disease in early stage and late stage linkage between screening and treatment.
Geeta with her family and friends joined an NGO to provide palliative care, pain relief, love and care for women in the disease's last stage. This is the wish of all the countries in the Sierra region to control and eliminate cervical cancer.